everybody. I've got a 60 minute session that I'm doing for a client. This is a follow up session. So if you're interested in watching the previous one, I'll put a link in the description so you can view it. So this session is going to be pretty intense. I'm going to read the goals here and get started. Okay. Hi, Abby. I'm very excited about today's session. I'm a little disappointed in myself because two weeks after the first session, demons and maybe human souls attached to me. I released them in lucid dreams and I feel felt happy and free, but two days later they came back again. One night ago, I fought off some dark being because he was dragging my etheric body from my bed some nights before. This night, something attached again. I see erotic scenes and somehow I am drawn to them, so maybe some part of me is looking for that experience. Six weeks before my first session with you, I had another psychic remove many beings, human souls and even higher vibrational beings outside of my aura field. She says I have a high ego and my mind is taking over and that may be putting me in trouble and will take years to heal. Years to heal? <laughs> I'm gonna I, I I know though I know what that energy is like it might take years to heal but let's let's see that's a bit of a scary thought right <laughs> how many years until I'm free <laughs> okay so my intentions are to do anything to help me become free you're the best psychic I came across but also amazing healer I don't know what my being still doesn't understand Overall, I feel better, but still have a heart pounding noise in my head and maybe too emotional. I want to feel my spirit as much as possible, become lighter, more open. So please do the spirit thing. Okay. Just a moment. I'm just going to absorb in your energy here from your goals. It's kind of a surreal life experience. And I'm sure a lot of people hearing about your goals might be just like wow I can't even imagine what you're going through but I know there's other people that would say I deal with that all the time so there's people in your bracket that are going through this and then others that aren't but we'll definitely we'll definitely be discovering some things today and bringing this into balance. You were also mentioning um, before about headaches, so I'm gonna look at that too. Okay. All right, I'm going to relax and get started here. I'm so glad that I get to help you. Thank you so much for this opportunity to help you and, and for being open to sharing. Okay, here we go. So I'm, I'm talking to the universe right now, so I'm just sending information out based on what you shared with me and what the, the plan of attack is that I'm perceiving here. Removing entity attachments, any type of any entity attachments, even human souls. Understanding what is attracting these experiences. Exploring the mind, healing the mind of headaches or just noise, anything related to bringing balance to the mind, third eye. What is this attraction to the erotic um, experiences that came to you? Trying to make sense of where that's coming from. Heart pounding emotions, bringing balance here as well. I'm literally instantly just 
it's like a power word. So I just say stop really loud. And when I say that, it's to stop time. It's to stop the movement of all entities, everything in your energy field, okay? I'm checking to see how much of this is a real, like real consciousness or illusions created by your ego. Ego also creates entities and entities that aren't, that don't have actual timelines and histories. They're illusions, they're fabrications, but they're real. They actually do feel real. You'll experience them as real. So... There's a lot of different reasons why ego will, will do that. It'll do that, for instance, when it feels threatened. So when you're on a, a, an awakening pathway, um, your ego can get freaked out. It'll feel threatened because you're moving from the human survival mode to something expanded and infinite. The ego feels threatened by that. So it will create reasons to put you back into your place so that you don't expand, so that you're focusing on things that aren't actually real. Um, and it's fearful. It can be full of anxiety. It can be all kinds of things. So some of this is not, some of this is part of your ego. Yes, yeah, some of this is definitely... Um, more like a fabricated realities. The fact that you're sensitive is why your ego can do this and you will feel it and it'll be real, okay? You're very energetically sensitive. Learning how to do journeys is going to help you big time because it will help you separate between... So for instance, it helps me because for let, let's just say in the middle of the night, I get woken up and I start to feel like uh, an anxiety. Um, and I, I can tell there's something in the energy side of things. I don't know what it is, but my mind now is running crazy, trying to understand, trying to make sense of call in the angels, call in the protection. But really what I need to do is just stop and be cool with it. Okay, so there's some a visitor or there's something inside myself that I'm feeling resistance. Well, what is it exactly? It feels uncomfortable. It feels like an evil spirit. Is that what it really is though? So I have to stop and I have to go into a journey state in order to learn about the energy. So when I go into the journey state, I can feel that energy. And I actually can experience it or process it from the soul level. And that information then comes to my conscious mind so I can make better sense of it. That gives me control, okay? over falling into fear or insecurities, confusion, because the mind can't understand this stuff. But your soul does, and you're part of your soul, and your soul does have the power to, to um, help get information to your mind that will help make a sense of things. It'll give you a, more power. Um, I don't like the word power and control per se, but that's kind of what it will feel like. It'll feel like you get it now. You get the difference between being human, processing all this stuff as a human versus being human but letting the human go in order to enter into the journey state, um, which then works with energetic feelings of everything. Like literally going into the journey state, going towards like, okay, there's this, I, this uh, being, I can feel there's something here in the middle of the night. So I'm going to feel that with my eyes closed. And I'm going to approach it. And I'm going to go into literally my creative mind to do this. Because your creative mind is actually connected to the infinite universe. That's where the creativity comes from. <laughs> so your psychic mind is tuned into your creative mind. is tuned into the infinite universe. Which is also tuned into your heart and your soul. You see how all this stuff works? But this will give you um, a balance with your ego. This will also help you develop a healthy relationship with your ego. Because your ego is there to protect you from yourself, but it's like yourself is really just kind of imprisoning you. So you have to love ego no matter what. Just, it's a biological part of our existence. It's a beautiful thing, okay? So we have to see it for the good that it is. Um, but when it gets scared, it can create scary realities too. <laughs> and we're picking up on that, but it's really just your ego feels threatened. 
Okay, I needed to tell you all of this. Yeah, there is so much going on in here. It's not all illusion, okay? Some of it is, but not all of it. Boy, it's hard to even know where to begin. I mean, wow. <laughs> Gosh, I don't even know where to begin. I'm like, <sighs> there's stuff everywhere. It's like, I'm checking out the backs. I'm checking out the front side. I'm checking out all your different chakras. I'm just like, man. And it's all different types of things. It's not just like, um, you know, it's all different types of things. <laughs> I feel like starting on the back side of you, okay? But as I say that and I go to the back side of you, suddenly it's like, well, I feel like starting in your sacral chakra because there's definitely some stuff going on there. And then as I say that, it's like, well, maybe the solar plexus because my God, there's some serious stuff going on there. It's like, oh man, I'm going to have to really, I'm, I'm talking to my higher self on how to approach this because I want to clear as much as I can. But then we need to find out, this isn't all ego, okay? We're going to have to find out what else is attracting all this stuff. All right, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to find the part of you that's attracting all this stuff. That says, I want all of this stuff in my energy field. Then by healing that, we can release all this stuff. Because you won't want it in your energy field anymore. And you have an aspect of yourself that can kick this stuff in the butt and kick it out. <laughs> all by itself. <laughs> it's kind of like I could focus on the pinched nerve. Like a sciatic, let's say you have sciatica, I could focus on the pinched nerve or I could straighten your spine, right? So straightening the spine then will fix the pinched nerve. So here it's like the pinched nerve is all these entities, um, but really I need to fix the spine, which is the part of you that is wanting this experience. You're clearly a very smart person because... Um, you're a good listener. You're wanting me to explain things and describe. Um, you're wanting to understand. Like I can, it's very easy for me to articulate these understandings for you. It's not always easy for everybody, okay? Because when I'm in your energy field, I'm tuned into your frequency. So it does um, have an effect on how I communicate with you. So like people who are super creative and colorful, usually their journeys can be super colorful and vibrant and, you know, the, the different types of language being used. So that's, that's what's kind of interesting about and unique about you, okay? So, so now that I have said that, my intention is to create this pathway. It's pretty muddy. I mean, it's like quicksand, but it's like mud. It's like I'm sinking and being swallowed up in some kind of really dense mud. But it is like perfect for mud pies. Like, it's that kind of mud. <laughs> it's a, like, it has a stomach effect to it as well, but it's not necessarily in, uh, connected to your solar plexus region. It seems more connected to your sacral chakra. Something, man, I mean, in here getting swallowed up there on the third eye and then on the back side of your head, there's a lot of movement. It's almost like a weird energy cap. And I'm going into, literally, it's defined as a butthole. So it's like to be squeezed out. Like there's something, I don't know, but that's what it's defining itself as. And so I'm going to get pooped out now, <laughs> is literally what's going to happen here. I'm just going with it. I'm cool with it. <laughs> like, bring it. I've never felt like getting pooped. I've never been pooped out before, so let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, this is really emotionally... Um... 
there's a lot of sadness about this and um, jammed in the throat as well. It is opening some things up in solar plexus. You're not ashamed either. And that's incredible. That's amazing. You're just sad. I'm entering into a space that's completely, I mean, I don't know how to define it. It's, it's surreal. It's kind of like interdimensional and it's spherical. It's clear and white and a really dark red color and it's curvy. So it doesn't really have, it's not a defined space, but it exists. That's where I am now. The space exists, but it's, 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 it's not a defined space. It doesn't know where it exists. It doesn't know how to exist. It doesn't know what it is. It has some feminine energy to it. It also has something of a really um, absolutely stunning blue color. It's um, small, like a stone that glows from the inside, blue. It's kind of like this in a way, my um, Labradorite, but it's so much more <laughs> amazing. It's just like, it's like hypnotically gorgeous, but it is like a chunked off stone that glows from the inside and it's really blue. This space is complicated because, it, again, sacral chakra is starting to, I feel movement going on here. Um, I see what is an infestation, so to speak, beings um, doing things in there. <sighs> There's a man that's walking forward. It feels like a conjunction between different events that are somehow intersecting here in this undefined space. But just by being here, I'm going to stand in the center now that I can find the intersecting lines. I'm going to stand in the center so I can be truly in the epicenter of the undefined space. So I'm connected to everything that is coming through here. It's, bro it's somehow broken. But it still exists. So the question is, do I, do we make this whole again? Do we define it or do we let it go? But it is so complex that it has to be somewhat defined. There's so many just images that just slap in here like, this really large black, um, this is a shadow being, but he has density to him. He has, he's kind of intimidating, but I don't know that he's really a bad guy. He's just kind of intense. Um, all the while, there's this image that just sort of splats in, and it's a, just a face that was knocked, I don't know, to the ground, but it looks like it's upright. Um, and there's something green, squishy that the face is on. And it's like the face is molding before my eyes and rotting before my eyes. But it's upright, even though it looks like he's lying down. I'm just going to look at his face. I'm, I'm having you look through my own eyes. So you can just see through my eyes what I see. And it, you don't have to feel intimidated or anything. You can be present here with me. You hate this place, you say. You hate this place. And I, I tell you, thank you for saying that. Because you, you need to express their feelings. <laughs> And I say, do you still hate this place now that you got that out? What do you really feel about this place? You 
you suddenly, it's like you're zoned in, we're talking about this space, you're coming back to yourself to rethink the feelings. Then now your mind just is completely somewhere else and you have no idea that we are here right now talking about this space. <laughs> your just mind is, it's almost like some weird trigger happened and you're not here, you're not actually here. You're here, but you're not here. So I touch your third eye and I bring you back, consciously back here. But it's very, very hard because there it's just like you refuse to be here. And I, I'm using a power word, but I don't know what the power word is in en English. It would be um, a sudden sound that is to wake you up, to bring you here, and to disconnect you from literally everything that you were just f focusing on. And it was all just mindless garbage. It, so, all right. Again, even after I do that, there's something here in the mind that is not wanting you to, to participate in this undefined space. It's a thing, okay? It's a, like a thing that is is um, encouraging your mind to look in different directions. And it seems to have an influence over you to the point I'm just going to have to time this out so like it's a creature. It's got very pale skin. It kind of reminds me of a Dobby, like, you know, from Harry Potter. That tight, its lo skin looks like this. Looks like Dobby skin. And it looks like, not Dobby, but creature. Creature from Harry Potter. He's a little bit more sinister. I think that's what his name was, was another kind of elf that does end up helping. But he's he is a little more sinister and angry. And this being reminds me of Creature from Harry Potter. And he does look like a creature. He's got, uh, there is a a pleasurable feeling that he gets from being connected to your mind. I mean, it's like straight up pleasure. He literally is making love to your mind is what it's like. I somehow you're you have a part of your conscious that's following me here and able to see through my eyes again and see what I'm seeing. And you're grounded about it. You're not reacting or anything. You're just wanting to understand. So I show you how we're just looking at it. We're translating the under the understanding of this. I'm just touching the creature with my energy hands. It does not want to let go. It's like clinging to your mind. Like it's all it's like immersed its body into it. It's like it's like souls are intertwined like it's intertwined with the soul of your mind like it's like making love to your mind like that's what it's like so again something this is very complicated okay so as i'm working on figuring out how to remove this thing you become kind of robotic this there's a version of you that's looking through my eyes really grounded is present again all right and now you're standing next to me but you're becoming robotic you're becoming like hypnotized yourself like you're becoming um unable to stop this this creature like you you can't even think for yourself again like it just suddenly triggered something in you and you're not yourself again Hmm. I'm still learning about how to remove this, okay?
I have to. <laughs> so it, literally it has its own sexual sexuality, okay? So its sexuality is plugged into your mind. So I had to touch its sexuality <laughs> in order to disconnect it from your mind so I can just disconnect it. So... So I'm touching its sexuality and now I'm touching its mind. It really, it's like, it kind of echoes between creature and Dobby. You know, it looks like a lot like Dobby, like um, softer, more humble looking. It is disconnected now from your mind. It's kind of like a baby in a way. It's acting like it doesn't understand itself. Uh, it's just, it's just following what it was enjoying. It's not that um, intelligent, I guess. It just kind of was doing what it was enjoying. This is getting... There's more to it than that, okay? It's starting to turn black now. I don't know if it's dying or what, but something of your mind is also turning black. And there's some sort of trigger movement going on in your sacral chakra now, too. I'm going to take this weird thing to the undefined space. This is getting emotional. I'm actually going to take it through <laughs> the poop shoot. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like a fun slide or something. It's weird. It's like, let's just do it. <laughs> That's how you get there, you know? That's like the portal. Yeah, there's some other beings in here now. There's a little bit of a reorganization. These beings are very, um, again, intimidating. There's three of them. They're starting to look more human. Not like shadow beings with some density, some structure. And they look like actual people. Human people, but still kind of standing in the shadow. And they're very um, dense looking bodies. They're starting to look kind of like uh, military people, like sergeants. I mean, they don't, they have like, um, so like a, they're not wearing a helmet. They're just wearing a different type of hat. I don't feel that these are real humans or anything. They're, it's almost like they're, because I'm starting to see that this, it's like they start to look this way and then they go back to looking dark again. And so it's kind of undefined what their identity is or what they actually look like. Which tells me that they don't actually look like that. But they are expressing themselves in kind of this vibrational pattern of holding um, a position of power um, it has to do with war, has to do with str strategy and military thought, intensity, don't want to mess with that guy, he's like a sergeant to a lot of men kind of thing, <laughs> um, there's something like this to the energy, so when I come in and I've got this creature slash Dobby baby and it's black now, they're, um, and talking amongst each other. I asked them if they would like me to attach this to their mind. <laughs> Here, you can, I'll put it in your mind and let's just, let's just see what they say. They, the three turn into one, one being and it's quite an, it looks like, uh, it's a monster with very sharp teeth. It's a, it's a monster. It kind of looks like venom, but um, more animal. It looks like an alien animal with very big, sharp teeth. And it's black. Ask it, what are you doing in the undefined space? 
Again, it's changing shape again. It's starting to look like a person. Like a human person. I'm going to have to understand it better. I'm just putting my hand into its heart and into its mind. It just turns into a really thick black goo. See how it's changing shapes all the time? It's like a chaos energy. It's like a pure chaos energy. So it, it just, it's undefined itself, right? Because what is chaos? It's just like a scatterbrain of extremes or it's just like, um, I mean, I think you can, you can, can, if you were to take a day and contemplate chaos, you could imagine all the faces that it could take, all the expressions, all the identities it could take. So I'm just putting it in a con containment, a space of containment. And I'm going to put this uh, creature in a space of containment by itself. So I have two uh, containers here. They're basically cubes, all right? I'm putting them into cubes. And I'm coating the cubes with gold and platinum. <sighs> That was a huge energy shift. That is a that is a huge improvement. These cubes, I'm we're just gonna let. I mean, they're kind of disappearing on their own. It's like this energy is complete now. This undefined space is starting to look like a flower, and it's more like um, creamy pink in color, and it has petals that come out. Um, like a lotus flower? Is that like a... Yeah, I think that would be like a lotus flower. It doesn't feel um, broken. It feels more balanced. It doesn't feel undefined. It feels defined, although I still don't understand it. It's the energies are coming together in a better balance. I have to go visit your sacral chakra for a bit. And I also will have to visit your mind, but I was going to go straight to your mind, but it says I need to go to your sacral chakra first, so we'll go do that. I'm going to come back to this space, which is a defined space. However, it's still, I still don't understand it, but the energies say it is a defined space now. <laughs> and it's still not whole, it's not complete yet. Your sacral chakra is just like, let's just see how much we can stuff in there. <laughs> so there's like, what could be like uh, lots of little arms and legs just like going everywhere. It's like there's just so much stuffed in there, like bodies, like beings in here. And it's really tight as well. It's like... um you're trying to close it, close the door. Um, so these are getting stuck in the door. It's very tight. So it should just be open and breathable, right? So let's go in and clear this out. I'm still trying to, to find, and maybe it's the defined space that is attract. Like I'm still trying to make sense of what part of you is allowing all this stuff in. I tell you, I need you to relax your sacral chakra. I need you to actually open it up. It's like going to the dentist with a mouthful of rotten teeth and not opening your mouth. Like, no, no, you can't get in there. It's like, you need to say, ah, because <laughs> I have to come into your sacral chakra. <laughs> like, we're going to figure this out. So it's going to be okay. <laughs> You really don't want to relax it, but you have no, you have to relax it. There is something huge, like a big, big, big bloated thing. It, it's a big round ball with like legs, like 
It's like a pig. It's like a really big pig. And it's smooth. It's like got a balloon for a body. It's smooth. It's dense. It's got like little arms and legs and a little face. And it's huge. It's a big giant round ball. Hmm. <sighs> It's like a weird party. But it isn't fun for you. It's starting to smell really putrid in here, like, um, lots of pig poop. Like manure scent. Oh, well, that's moldy or something. Like, there's manure plus something else in here. It's like really stinky. Like rotted flesh, maybe? And the more it's like wants to show what a fun place it is, you know, all these beings are having a great time, but really it's starting to show its true colors and it's really, really dismal. It's really full of suffering. There's so much pain in here. It's just like, it's your pain. It is just like having a mouthful of rotted teeth and being terrified at what that's going to feel life to, like to get your teeth fixed. It's like me coming in here to fix this space and being afraid of what that's going to feel like because it could hurt, right? That's It's pretty severe. It's very, very tender. It's... I'm going to have to take some time to figure this out. I'm going to just bring in a bunch of fairies and we're going to plant a garden in here. We're going to do that. <clears throat> we're going to get some music. We're going to plant some, some seeds. It's going to be great. We're going to bring the sunshine in. We're going to make it rain. <laughs> <laughs> like real rain so then the flowers grow and stuff like that it's gonna be cool man it's like you are so emotional like you're so you're just crying and crying and this does have shame this does you i mean you're clearly extraordinary i mean you're okay. You're okay. Like, you just want to understand. You just want the answers. Like, you, there's nothing here to hide. Like, you're like, I'm just, I don't care. If you have to go through a butthole, just do what you need to do to, to get, help me understand and help me bring balance to this. There's just, like, no shame. It's incredible. It's very rare. All right. There's a little bit of shame here, which makes you human. I mean, um, but it's really still impressive to me that it, that you're, I mean, more so sadness. It's just like, I'm just simply sad because I, this, I'm just simply sad. That's really what it's like here. It's the reason why you not carrying a whole lot of shame. It means that you're humble and you're okay with yourself no matter what. And a lot of people don't know how to be okay with themselves no matter what. And, but you can be okay with yourself. And that's really amazing. You know you're not a perfect person. You're okay making mistakes. You're okay with it. Because um, you're just trying to get through life. And you're not going to be too critical or judgmental of yourself. Like So you, your relationship with shame is substantially less than your average person. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> it's actually helpful for you to hear that too. So <laughs> you're at, you, it's making you feel bright and uh, proud of yourself. I mean, you're you're not sad. You're just. Hearing me talk about something that makes you pretty extraordinary as a human being. 
Um, all the while the fairies are in here still planting seeds and the sun is out and the breeze is blowing, like the rains are coming, the rainbows are out, you know, it's like there's a, there's a system of nature going on here. And we don't have to understand the pot belly pig or whatever this other stuff is. We just let, we just let the nature run its course and it'll just flush that out naturally. Still don't know what it is that, why you're attracting this. I still don't, haven't figured it out yet. And maybe we, that's where I need to go to your mind and take a look at ego. But let's continue with where we're at here. I just want to really feel um, good about your sacral chakra before I leave. <laughs> you still have stuff going on with your mind for sure. I'm just, okay, so I, I'm just going to go over here. So there's so many different fairies, all different colors of the rainbow. And they're so adorable and so sweet and cheerful. And they're singing and they're playing songs and they're planting seeds and they're helping things grow in your sacral chakra. So it will feel beautiful. You'll feel uh, beautiful. Like you'll feel like a beautiful person. So when your sacral chakra is really healthy, it makes you feel beautiful. And any th terrible things can be going on in your life. And it's like, but you'll still feel beautiful and you'll be able to work through it with this, with this upper essence of, of beauty and love, like an Aphrodite type energy. And um, it's so, it's so gorgeous to feel that way. It's um, patient, it's peaceful, it's taking the time, caring about yourself caring about your choices, caring about, you know, it's very beautiful. They're uprooting some um, energetic weeds. It's, I mean, I see some like pulling out like really big black roots. They're kind of wriggling around <laughs> that the fairies are going to work in here. Let's bring in some elves. Let's bring in some some happy gnomes let's bring in some like let's bring in our nature friends right to help your sacral chakra feel beautiful it'll give you such so much empowerment and love of life man it's really moving it's really shifting energy there it's so good it's really really good I'm not going to go up to the mind just yet. I feel like I'm going to go to your solar plexus now. Very, very exhausted in the mind as I'm I'm just continuing to let them do their thing. We'll check on it here later. I'll check on the defined space, which is still kind of a mystery. But I'm going to go to the solar plexus now. Another mess. I mean, it's it's really like you close it really tight, and it's like little legs are are stuck in there. It's funny. <laughs> so I'm just like just relax it. <laughs> so I tell you to relax it. <laughs> well, we gotta take a look at this. It's uh, pretty wounded. It's really sore feeling in here. I mean, it feels like... It's just really, really sore. Like, it's an actual body sore. And it's enormous. And it's re really, really tender. Like, it's more tender than your sacral chakra. This is like, don't even, it's like, it's like a nerve is just dangling out in your mouth and somebody's pinching it and pulling on it. Like, it's really ridiculously tender in here. So I, I'm just touching it and I'm showing you this too. There's a really gross kind of looks like melted cheese on the other side of it. What is a really um, 
it's hard and it's like a reddish color to it it looks like a body um i don't know like some kind of skin it's uh, very very sensitive i'm touching it i'm relaxing it down there's this like oozy cheese that's oozing out but i will say it is it is um actually pretty quickly um transforming here there's nobody here there's no entities here other than what i'm experiencing right now but i'm i want to just clear this and then i'm going to look around it's like those little legs. It's almost like the spirit realm is showing me something silly to, <laughs> to lighten the mood about everything. But your solar plexus were really, really tight. But there was stuff in your sacral chakra, just so you know. There was like weird beings in there and stuff in there. But we got the fairies and the elves and the happy gnomes on that. So still, still neutralizing the sore spot. Just letting the cheese melt. <laughs> Just letting it keep melt. Oh, it's a weird eyeball. It's actually um, an eye. Um, so all that's melting out and um, it's an eyelid that opens from the sides, not um, up and down, but like right and left. It opens from the sides. It's an eye. It's an actual face. It has a third eye as well, and it's connected to your third eye. So there is something in here. It is the wound itself, is something, is a thing. It's going to take some time. I can't just, um, <clears throat> I mean, I have to take the time to understand this. Is this yet another chaos energy? Is this a real being? Is this a, what is this exactly? Is it yourself? He's, uh, he can't move. He's attached to the wall. I mean, I'm starting to see a whole face now stuck in the wall here. And it's like a body kind of appearing stuck in the wall. It's like the, it's like a heart shaped face. And you're stuck in the wall. You can't get out. But you're stuck in the wall of your emotions. What does that say exactly? when you when one is stuck in the wall of their emotions what does that say exactly and this is a heart-shaped face so it has something to do with the heart of you but it's also emotional stuck in the wall of your emotions it's it's a part of you but you won't let go either because you find your emotions are actually comforting like a blanket you do uh, find this comforting because i see the body in the wall is kind of it it doesn't it wants to be beyond this but at the same time it doesn't know what is beyond this it feels warm in the wall it feels like the wall is a blanket of nurture it's holding it it it's kind of got some baby like um natures like it wants to be in a warm blanket it wants to be snuggled um it wants to be kind of rocked slowly to sleep it's it's got this cute adorable baby like nature but it looks like a a person like a grown person with a heart-shaped face that's all red And I say, you're going to have to let go. This is going to get very cold feeling. But the cold is actually good. The cold is actually healthy. Because we're going to have to go from one extreme, which is warm and nurturing, but unhealthy. Because it is um, submerged and it's sort of, a, it's basically become an artery in your solar plexus. And so now leaving that is going to be very cold and lonely feeling and disconnected, but it's actually adjusting you to what is natural balance. So it's going to feel uncomfortable to adjust to natural balance, but that's what we're doing here. Uh, 
um, you show me, so I'm bringing you out of the wall still and you're, I'm not sure if this is a distraction, but you're saying there's something, a problem with this sacral chakra that's um, causing this. It's, it could be a totally different sacral chakra space, but it looks like a giant pus bubble on the genitals is what it's like. And as the body tries to come out, wiggle out, it looks like it's made out of black sticks. And it's very big, big bones that are all dry. And it looks like it's a dead body as well. It does, it, it doesn't feel cold, but it feels numb. It, it feels numb. Like it has no feelings at all. Hmm. So this is new. This is something we got to figure out. But I do need to go inspect the sacral chakra thing because if these two are connected and this is the balance they're working with, solar plexus has got this going on, sacral's got this going on, and they're both kind of working with um, um, rod and energies, right? But that's how they're staying balanced because they don't know how to be anything else. They only know how to be this. This is their perfect balance, even if it's painful and it's not healthy. That is still balance. So I got to figure out what the sacral chakra connection is. It's, um, okay, again, the third eye starts to light up as I touch this um, pus bubble. Your, say, the, your solar plexus is definitely changing. I mean, I'm feeling changes in my solar plexus. It's hard to describe the way that it feels. But it is positive. It is movement. All I do is just continue to just touch the pus bubble, okay? Some kind of person, actually. It's like a living thing. It acts like a teardrop. The form of the body is a skeletal and it had kind of a male persona, but now it's got sort of changing into a female persona. And it's also changing into male and female. This erotic stuff may have been... Um, a message to have you look at healing or bringing balance to your sacral chakra and solar plexus and balance to your divine masculine and divine feminine sides. There was actually nothing um, I'm picking up on that was really um, malicious or evil about it. It was really just kind of a message to help you. Even if it's kind of like, it could be totally out there. I get, I've gotten messages like this before, like, what the heck <laughs> is that, uh, you know? But it, it's actually trying to help you. So this is clearly trying to help you focus on healing these areas. But there's an imbalance here with your divine masculine and divine feminine sides. And I see this body's just rolling around now in the solar plexus, um, a male and a female, just kind of sort of just rolling around like this. And there's no kind of intimacy going on. It's just like... I don't know what what this means exactly, but they just kind of keep circulating. Male, female, male, female, and, the, and both at the same time. But they can't feel... It's like there's, a, there's something missing in the closeness between these two. Between them. They can't feel a oneness. They always feel separation from each other, even if they're literally connect, like on top of each other kind of thing. Like they still can't feel the oneness, the bond of the spirit. And this is like your divine masculine, divine feminine sides, okay? Are struggling to feel the oneness with each other. I'm going to bring the fairies and the elves and the happy gnomes in here because there's so much we can do when we bring nature into our, our chakras. It just brings nat natural balance. And I feel like bringing the element of water in here 
and water flowing because emotions can be like water and water is healthy emotions are healthy so I'm just gonna have water just flowing through and create like a harmonious natural scene where the divine masculine and, and divine feminine can can spend time together because sometimes to work on oneness you need to just get to know each other and slowly build that relationship I know it's like it's like um, a boy and a girl meet and then they go on a date and then they decide they like each other and want to take things further. <laughs> We're doing that with your divine masculine and divine feminine. We're going to introduce them to each other so they can see how things go. <laughs> I think they're going to hit it off. They just need some date time <laughs> and a natural healthy scene. Yeah, there the fairies, there's a one fairy here who's really showing me that there's more to the sacral chakra space or solar plexus space that needs healed, but she's um she's saying they're going to work on everything and but she wants me to go to the mind here, so I'm going to go do that. She's got like a little blue fairy outfit on. She looks very classic fairy. She's got black hair and she has pale skin. She has like a I don't know, just a little blue dress. Your mind is a real menace of a structure in here. It's um it's got a mind of its own and it is you. It is you. You see so ego again. But we're not going to, we can knock some years off of the healing process, okay? <laughs> we're, we we got to restructure this. But it, because you're used to the energy structure, you could be vulnerable to, to, you know, two steps forward, one step back kind of thing. But we're still making progress, okay? We're still making progress. And again, when use these tips here because this is going to give you self-empowerment to start working on healing yourself, which again is like three steps forward, one step back. Still making progress, okay? So I actually think you can handle this, but you got to learn the techniques to handle it. Um, and it's going to change your life and actually open you up to something like a purpose or potential. Because to go through these experiences is, is the learning, powerful learning that makes you an amazing teacher for others that are going through these experiences. If you can learn how to conquer it, if you can conquer yourself, if you can under, learn a way to comprehend it or work through it, you will become a master teacher to help others. Do you realize a master teacher? Not everybody's going through these extreme things and then those who are don't always conquer them. You can conquer your experience. You really can do it, okay? That's not me talking to your ego. That's me talking to your heart and your soul and your truth, all right? So it's kind of like in here, it's like, uh, so we have all these nature scenes, right? Growing in the sacral chakra and the solar plexus chakra. But then in your mind, there's like the machine, the man-made machine, you know, that's trying to destroy the earth, <laughs> the natural balance of your body. And um, so there's this... Uh, it's got a mind of its own massive evil machine and it's smog and it's running on fossil fuels. It's just de destroying everything, okay? But I have to understand why. By the way, the defined space is being fed um, by all of this natural energy from the solar plexus and the sacral. It's starting to look absolutely like a Buddha level space, like a Zen space. It's starting to define itself as um, as Zen type energy, like uh, literally the the undefined space becomes the defined space that's still a mystery that is now just it's just pulling in the foods the energy foods in order to to define itself for what it truly is, which is a high vibrational space, a space of pure love and enlightenment. I'm actually feeling like this needs to go into your crown, okay? It needs to be in your crown chakra. So I'm moving this lotus flower, which is very beautiful, very Buddha level energy, enlightenment energy. It's awesome. 
it's just simply awesome. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to place it into your crown, okay? And I just tell the machine that it's okay. It's like um, you could have a human that is, you know, they're making lots of money. They... And this is not this is not a negative thing. I'm just trying to come up with an idea to help you understand the machine. Okay, so let's say you have a human who's like big business, and they're they they've kind of developed a nature that is greedy, that is possessive of what they have um, spent their whole life building. Let's say they're a big oil company, and now they're the owner and they're making lots of money. Let's say that is all taken away from them now, and there's no more need for oil companies. Um, it's like there's some massive insecurity going on here with the, the mind of its own, um, with the machine. It's extremely insecure. It's terrified of losing everything it worked so hard for. What did your ego work so hard for again? <laughs> ego is so weird, you know? <laughs> it's like this is why learning how to talk to ego is so important. Because don't judge that friend. Just don't judge that friend. Don't judge the oil company tycoon person. Don't judge it, these people. Don't judge the ego. Just support and love and nurture. And bring them back into the harmony of their true nature. Bring the fairies in and the elves and the happy gnomes, okay? And the crown is starting to really, man, blossom. Like, it, it's so ready for just pure enlightenment like pure love from the universe from every dimension from everywhere it's like given a new breath of fresh air it's like reborn a reborn chakra um reborn crown chakra it's freaking amazing so i'm just turning shutting off the machine the mind of its own and I'm bringing it down to a humble person. This is also a chaos energy, okay? It's not just ego, all right? It's not just your ego. It's also a chaos energy. Which a chaos energy, a pure chaos energy, is not a transformable energy because it's like a source energy in a way. Like, I, I don't know how, but you can box it up. You put this chaos energy, which has consciousness, and you place it into a cube, like Metatron. Metatron and cubes, man. That's all I'm going to say there. But you put it into a cube, and then it will go through a life cycle. Okay, that source energy now becomes a spirit that will go through a life cycle in the cube of incarnations that could be trillions and that chaos energy i don't know how it it came to be or how you breathe life into it etc but it is like a spirit and so it is in a cube and now it has to go through a life cycle in order to understand itself and to bring to learn how to bring harmony to itself is that how souls are born <laughs> some souls okay and something of yourself birthed that chaos energy. So you're a parent. <laughs> it, it's a really crazy universe, but it's great. <laughs> it's actually special. Now you see you're putting love into that energy in a new way. Because you actually care about the spirit of it. Which is, is beautiful. Is very beautiful. You're putting love into the cube in order to support that energy in its transformation process, its self-discovery process. <sighs> There's more to your mind here, okay? I'm just going to stick around just a little bit longer. It's more... So that chaos energy has been removed, which was connected to the machine, which was connected to the, a mind of its own, okay? So that's been put in a cube. That's been let, let go over there. But now your mind, I mean, this is a job of its own. Like, there's a lot to do here. It's like a real, it's like somebody took 
um, a peeler and peeled and cored out your mind. It's like, and it's really tender in here as well. Really painful. No wonder you have headaches. I'm gonna bring the fairies in, the, the elves and the happy gnomes. Um, I'm bringing in Mother Earth, the spirit of our planet. I'm gonna bring in um, the spirit of the sun, so Ra, the sun god. It may be corny to some people, but Ra, the sun god, is legit, man. He's freaking awesome. His consciousness is pure light. And he's purely loving, and he is like a beautiful father figure energy. He is super loving, super loving. So I'm bringing his sunlight in here. I'm bringing the earth here. How about the spirit of the universe to bring balance, okay? It's interesting that I'm bringing all these energies here to rebalance the structure of your mind. It's like your universe caved in on itself because your third eye is a universe. Your crown is a universe. So I'm bringing balance to the universe of your third eye. I really see you able to conquer your experiences. I really do. And I know we have another session coming up. Just imagine how much awesomer your energy balance is going to be. So this session is bringing, I mean, the entities just like your energy feels beautiful. It feels beautiful. It feels loving. It feels nurtured. It feels like it's nurturing itself now. It feels like it's holding itself in a healthy way. Um, this needs work, your mind. I'm just sent, I'm just filling it up with the fairies and the elves and the happy gnomes. I'm filling it up with lots of seeds, Mother Earth energy. Um, you know, Ra the Sun God, the universe, spirit of the universe. Like I'm sent, filling it with lots of this energy to rebuild it continue to allow your crown to just circulate but this this needs to have a health like this needs balanced <sighs> super big improvement so i'm gonna do two things before i go I'm going to bring just a light, starlight from your crown into your third eye, okay? And I'm bringing starlight from your crown up into your soul star chakra. Like, I'm, bring, I'm just moving it up the ladder, okay? Okay. That was overwhelming. But that was good. I mean, that needed to happen. There's still work to be done here, okay? Just, but, um, but let's, this is actually perfect. This is all the right amount of mending. So let's let all this energy circulate and find its new harmonious balance, okay? And then in the next session, we'll see how things are looking. Because once I do this session, right, you are finding a new harmonious balance. And that harmonious balance is going to trigger other balances. So then new things are going to rise up to the surface that we're going to need to look at. And focusing on balancing this third eye too and crown and um, just higher chakras. But it's just like doing a full on chakra, just rebalance again would be good for you but we'll just see how things go okay so all right thank you so much this is just absolutely excellent experience man mind-blowing cool <laughs> all right and for those of you watching thank you for watching all the way to the end i know it's a long session but it's worth it it's really worth it <laughs> you learn you can learn so much from others right we learn so much from each other all right, so if you're interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, have a great day, everybody.